All right, well, good morning, afternoon, evening, depending on where you may be. Thank you for standing by, and welcome to today's Tivoli User Community Ask the Expert series. In today's session, our expert speaker, Philip Stanton, will discuss setting up NetCool Omnibus Web GUI 8.1 Load Balancing with Jazz SM. Today's webcast is interactive, so you may ask a question at any time using the chat window or the raise hand button located in the control panel. Today's session is being recorded, and you'll be provided a copy of today's materials following the call. Now, Philip is an L2 Software Advisor Support Specialist based out of the United States. He has worked in the information technology field since 1998 and holds a Bachelor's of Science in Business Administration with an emphasis on information systems. Philip joined IBM in 2006 as an L2 Support Engineer for the Omnibus WebTop Web GUI system. System Service Monitors and Internet Service Monitor Software Solutions. Today he continues supporting the Web GUI, NOE, and Omnibus, as well as contribute to numerous internal Tivoli support initiatives. And with that, I'll turn the presentation over to Philip. Take it away. All right. Uh, thank you, and uh, thank you everyone for uh, taking the time to join this presentation. Um, I've got a few slides here. Uh, I'm going to try to get through those as uh, quickly as possible. There's a lot of people on, and um, I'm sure you all have lots of questions, so we'll try to uh, spend most of the time on that. So today we're going to be talking about uh, Nickel on the Earth with the eight word balancing with Jazz SM. Um, not to confuse you too much, but uh, Jazz SM, we're not talking about like Jazz SM and Administrative Services. Really, we're talking about Dash here. Um, which is built on top of Jazz SM. So let's move to the next slide. Uh, the things we're going to be covering today are going to be uh, the essential steps in setting up the load balancing cluster, um, joining the nodes to the cluster, removing the nodes to the cluster, things that you need to know about when you're when you have this cluster set up, some troubleshooting and um, some additional information you might need to know if you're planning on ever installing a fix pack on one of your nodes that's in a cluster. So I like to start with this just if you're if you're new to the idea of having your web GUI set up in a cluster configuration, just start with this conceptual image. Um, you know, it's not like a highly technical schematic or anything, but basically, this is what you're going to have. Um, a lot of people will try to replace the IHS server with some sort of a smart router or load balancer, like say an F5. Um, it's not. It's not that the F5 is not supported. It's just that the, the IHS server is so much more tightly integrated. You're going to have a much nicer experience. So uh, I'm going to include that in this diagram. And you can see here that essentially the IHS server is going to be load balancing your client connections in between different web GUIs, which all get their configuration from a, a DB2 database. This is the same conceptual design that has been around since Web GUI 731. So um, if you're not familiar with that, uh, maybe you have some questions. Um, I can see if there's any questions um, from Christina. We do have one question. Someone is asking what IHS server stands for. It is the IBM uh, HTTP server. It's essentially an Apache server, a special Apache build that uh, has a integrated uh, application plugin for uh, web sphere so uh, that that's the integration that I'm talking about that's going to make your user sessions much more smooth uh, you won't see 
a lot of downtime because the, the IHS server is going to detect wh which application is up or down and maintain your session much nicer. Is, was there anything else? That was the only question for now. All right, uh, so to set up your, your load balancing cl cluster, uh, first thing you're going to do is install DB210.1 or 0.5. Uh, then you're just going to set that to side. Remember what your instance user is so that you can come back to it for the rest of the config. Then you're going to install the HTTP server, the IHS server. Um, from that point, I flipped these instructions around a little bit from what you'd find in the, the Knowledge Center just because it um, makes more sense to me. And when I'm setting it up, I like to go in this order. So um, <clears throat> first we'd uh, enable the service server trust, which that step amounts to essentially editing the uh, SSL client props on each of your web viewing nodes. And then you're going to exchange your SSL certs between all the nodes so that node A can talk to node B, node B can talk to node A, and A and B can talk to C, and vice versa. Um, the next step here is that you're going to uh, quote unquote set up the load balancing cluster. At this point, you're going to run a script from one of your nodes. Um, I know the Knowledge Center at this point has some information talking about exporting your web GUI configs to data that zips and uh, setting that all aside. I, I mean, that can be a good idea, like just in case like you need a backup. So like you want to back up your config just before you um, move your configuration from the local file system into the database. <clears throat> but really, all you're going to need to do here is from the first node that you like your config, if you've done any customization, if this isn't a fresh install, uh, run the install uh, cluster script so that that node's configuration becomes the master configuration in your DB2 database at that moment. Uh, you're also going to want to let that sit for a couple minutes before you start joining your other nodes. The, the, the replication cycle happens about every 60 minutes or 60 seconds. So um, it's essentially based off of, like the time tasks from your server net. So for the very first time that you're creating that, if you've got a bunch of customizations and configurations, you really want to let that first one sit. Let it go through a couple synchronization cycles. Make sure it's in there. At that point, you can join your other cluster nodes. And I would do the same thing when you're joining them for the first time. If you join your second one, let it sit for a couple cycles. Give it five to ten minutes. And uh, then continue. Um, once you've got your server-to-server -server trust and you've got all your nodes configured so that their configurations come out of the DB2 database, you've essentially got your cluster set up. Um, I mean, at this point, you haven't done the IHS server configs that are needed, so the, the load balance isn't, isn't going to work correctly. <clears throat> but uh, you can go ahead and verify that your cluster is working at this point. So that means go to node A directly with the node A URL. You know, create a filter, create a view, create a page. When you're creating it, label it node A. Go to B and C. Is it there? You know, do some basic configure like verification. Run the HA 
uh, tool. Do all your nodes show up there? Is everything reporting that it's in sync? <clears throat> so the last step, it all has to do with basically setting up the load balancing part of the cluster. Uh, it's not required, so like you could have a small cluster where you like manually tell everybody to go to node A, and you have node B up and running and synced that nobody ever really connects to unless there's a problem with node A, right? So that very simple scenario, for like the cluster is essentially uh, set up so that you don't have to constantly do manual exports and imports, which can be tricky operations. So these next series of steps are for, for the HCP. So essentially, you're going to go and configure the Apache SSL information. Uh, use the IKEA, uh, IKEA man uh, for the um, SSL store and either create a self-signed cert that the HTTP server is going to use or make a cert request and get one from your internal or ex external CA. That one's pretty straightforward. So at that point, you can get HTTP server connections from your client to the IHS. But how does the IHS know where to go? Well, to do that, you've got to set up your clone IDs on each one of your nodes by editing the, the server XML, you know, run the gen plugin config script. Okay. So <clears throat> now with that gen plugin config script, your nodes have created um, the plugin config XML. And because you edited the server XML first, you got your node IDs, which are unique on each node, right? So it could be like one 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 two 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 whatever. It's got to be unique. And then you're going to use that plugin config on the IHS server. You're going to move it over into that that IHS server, you know, app plugin directory, so that it knows where to go. Um, this step's pretty straightforward. It's a little bit confusing because when you got you got to manually edit that config to put your configurations in for the other nodes. Now, what do I mean when I say the other nodes? I mean that when you generate that plugin config, if you're pulling it off of node A, it's going to have all the information for node A, but it won't have your node B, C information. So that, you're going to have to ma manually add that and use the you know the node A as the example and add those entries in the plugin XML. Okay, so once all that's complete, you've got you know your integrated load balancer, your cluster set up. How do you remove a node from a cluster, right? Uh, there's a lot of different reasons why you ne might need to do this, so you want to do it the right way. Um, you're going to run one command while the server is running, and you're going to run the other command while it stops. So first you'll remove the, the web GUI information from the cluster for that node by running the, the WAPI command re cluster remove node. Then shut down server 1. Thing. And then depending on if this is the, like you're just removing one node, you run a disjoin. Or if you've already removed all the nodes because you're doing some other operation and this is the last one, you can run the uninstall. And it'll get rid of the, the cluster information all the way. And that uh, command that you're going to be running against the DB2 database needs to be done with the server one down. Okay. And also while it's down, you're going to go back into your server init and you know set your cluster modes off 
so that uh, when you restart it, it's not trying to get to something that doesn't exist. So in a nutshell, that's how you're going to be setting up your cluster. So before we start the next session about or the next section about troubleshooting, uh, I'll see if there's any questions. I do have one question. This topology only provides high availability across the WebSphere component. Are we going to discuss multiple IHS servers in DB2 and HADR? Uh, I didn't have plans to discuss that, no. But it is, that is possible. You can have more than one IHS server for defi definitely. Um, and I've also seen the HADR configured. It, it's a possibility, um, but I, I wasn't planning on covering that here. I can get you more detail on that later. Okay, we have one more question. Hello. How do we replicate the information to the server one if it's not running in the case that we make map changes? Okay. okay. So, uh, so for that question, I'll just assume that you have two nodes and server one's down and you've made some changes to server two. I'll also assume, and unless I'm wrong, like just update the question, um, that both of them were still configured to be in the cluster. Okay. So you got node two, you made a bunch of changes, server one's down, it's still part of the cluster. All you have to do is start it. Okay. It's going to know that it's the got the old config. I have another question. You forgot to edit the httpd.conf to include the virtual host, plugin, config, XML, and WebSphere plugin module in hatool.sh doesn't exist in JazzSM112. Will this be included in the Omnibus Fix Pack due in August? Uh, I. I believe the HA tool is included. Um, I've seen it in there unless they pulled it out in 112. I think it's under the uh, Jazz UI bin, possibly. Uh, what, was, what was the other part of that question? Um, about editing the httpd.conf to include the virtual host. Ah, okay. So I can see somebody's probably tried this before. Um, so yeah, I, I wasn't. I was just going high level here. The httpconf is uh, part of what I'm part of the line item there, configuring Apache for SSL. Uh, so that would be your HTTP comp. Um, you have to, you know, enable that library. And if you're not running the IHS server as root and don't have, you know, access to the standard 80 and 443, then yeah, you're going to have to put a vhost there and and uh, redirect your traffic. Right, so, okay, that's, the only, uh, okay. that's the only questions for now. All right, um, so troubleshooting cluster issues. Um, you know, so here, here's like basically like a list of the most common problems that you're going to see when you're when you're configuring this the first time. Um, you're not using the right database version. Maybe you're using like 9.7 or 9.5 or something like that, uh, which isn't supported for, you know, 
in this case, we're, we're talking about what GUI 8.1, but like if you're on 7.4 or, you know, 7.3.1, they all have specific versions that that they are asking for. And I think in general, they stepped them from like, uh, you know, 9.5 to 9.7 to 10.1. Um, so uh, also, at one point in the past, there were some scripts that people would use to uh, generate your your uh, configuration schema, which would be like your your um, WSN, uh, you know, install install uh, command that you run from one of the cluster nodes to create your DVD configuration. In the past, there was like uh, you know, like a bundle of scripts that you'd use. And I've, I've seen in the past sometimes people will use that old bundle on like a newer version to try to create the configuration. That'll cause lots of problems. Um, because it, it, it'll it have like most of the schema that's supposed to be there, but it won't be quite right. So it'll kind of work, but not really. Um, another common problem that people will do is uh, not sync up the time. So you have to remember between all these servers, um, it's trying to keep track of who's got the most updates configuration, right? There's not, uh, just because you call one server your primary server where you um, point all your traffic doesn't mean that that's the server that the cluster thinks is primary or has the primary configuration. So most of that is all time-based, so you want to make sure that all your cluster nodes and the, and the DVT database, as well as the IHS server, are getting their time synchronized from the same time server. Um, the easiest way to do that was uh, NTP, you know. Um, and you know, go through and verify, and make sure they're on the, you know, all synced within a couple of seconds at very least. Uh, when you get out of sync more than a minute, that's when you're going to start seeing real strange problems. Where on one host you add a page, and it shows up on the other hosts for a minute or two, and then disappears, right? Because Maybe that host had had the wrong time, right? So it gets put into the cluster for a second, and then it recognizes that the other nodes have more up-to-date configuration files that don't include that, and gets rid of it. Um, so if you're running into any kind of like strange problems like that, the HE tool pretty much is going to sort out why why you're having that problem. Uh, it'll go through your database, read in the schema, and tell you, you know, what which nodes are in there, which ones are in sync, which ones are, aren't in sync. So it's really important that you know where that is and check it. Uh, okay, so a note about applying fix packs here. Um, in past versions, you could apply a fix pack to a node that's in a cluster and break a lot of things. The, the newer versions, I believe 8.1 is included in that. Um, you can attempt it, but it should stop you. Um, now, I, I wouldn't, you know, stake everything on it. And just because there's some logic there to to stop it from happening, and uh, you know, like destroying your server configuration, I wouldn't try it just to see if the the fix pack stops you. Um, you know. So before you apply a fix pack, you want to stop your web GUI. You want to remove it from the cluster. Okay, you want to make sure it's out of there. Install the fix pack on, on your node. Verify 
but it's actually there. Is, is it at the right version? Did you run the install manager uh, commands to make sure everything's run at the right version? Did you log in directly into that node and look at it and see if the versions are correct? Did you check your install logs and make sure that it said everything was successful? Right? So you want to make sure that it's act like it actually did what you thought you, it did. Do that for all your nodes. Okay. So everything's out of the cluster. Nobody's using the, the configuration from the DB2 database. Let's make it clean. Let's let's drop that database at that point. I mean, the uninstall will go through and remove uh, the schema, but as a general rule, I like to just make sure it's absolutely clean. Let's drop that database. Everything's out. We verified everything's out. We verified the fix packs are installed. Drop it, recreate it. Run the install. Run the join. Put everything back in. And that's if you do those things before applying fix packs, uh, it'll make your life much easier. And that's all I have for my overview. So if there's any questions, I'll take them. We do have one question. Is dropping the database an option if other IBM components are sharing the database? And you can just drop the database instance, not the entire database, but just the instance that WebGUI is using. Right, right. Sorry. Uh, I'm I'm saying the actual database instance, like the TIPDB or whatever you happen to call it. I'm not saying delete your DB2 install. Okay. We did get some other questions from via email before the session, so I'm going to go through them now as well. Can we make changes to the web GUI while clustered that does not require disjoin nodes, uninstall cluster, modify each node, reinstall cluster, rejoin nodes? Yeah, you can make all sorts of changes. You can, you know, create pages, you can create views, filters, basically anything that you'd want to do on a day-to-day -day basis with web GUI. You can make all those changes while it's in the cluster. You can add widgets, remove widgets, etc. Um, that's the whole point of the cluster is that it's going to replicate those changes from one node to the other. Okay. Is there a way to export and import from the cluster while clustered without disjoin uninstall import join? Uh, can you say that one again? A way to do what? Is there a way to export and import from the cluster? I think they're asking uh, about the TIP CLI export commands. Yeah, so the TIP CLI export commands, uh, the last time I checked, they, uh, in some, like if, if you really want to do this, I guess you could open a PMR for it and I can check to see if it's actually a bug or not, but uh, as far as I know, like when that command runs, it's pulling the local config, and when you're in a in the cluster, it's going to the database. I I don't think I think it's always been like that, as far as I can remember, because I've been doing this since like seven three one. I don't remember that ever working while it was in the cluster. So that might be a case for an, an RFE or a request for enhancement. Um, if you'd like to be able to do that, because it would make sense, like if you have a production cluster and you're trying to refresh uh, staging, I could see people wanting that. But unless you ask for it through an enhancement, um, and you as a customer need to ask for it, because I can ask for it, and they're just going to tell me, Phil, you're crazy. Uh, but you matter. I don't, you know, in that instance, I don't. So if you ask for it, you might actually get it.
Thank you. We have another question. Can you still have at least one of the nodes in the cluster running during a fixed pack patch to avoid a complete downtime of the environment? Yeah. Yeah, you absolutely can. And in fact, if you're using an IHS server, right, um, while that's running, even though the nodes are out of the cluster, as long as you freeze people from adding pages and creating things, that cluster is still going to work because the the session information is um, handled between the, the the application server nodes and passed back to the IHS server. So. Uh, that should be relatively seamless, and if you're doing one at a time, you can actually pull like that particular node out of your IHS config, and then bounce it real quick. It's you know a real fast start and stop. People probably wouldn't notice too much. Um, it starts just as fast as a patch you would, um, and finish one node, and then then once that one node's done flip your IHS server config back to where they all go to the one node and so that they're getting that same config or uh, go into the older version, whichever direction you want to go. But but yeah, you can you can still use that. Okay, we have another question. Will these questions and answers be posted on DW Answers? Yes, we'll be posting them on DW Answers, and we'll also be posting them in the Tivoli User Community Q&A. Another question that we received via email. Is there a way to directly edit the database which contains the configuration for the cluster? Um. Yeah, as far as uh, being supported, uh, I don't know of anyone that would that would or could support just arbitrary changes made to the DB2 database. But if you are in fact a DB2 guru and you know exactly what's happening in there when you're looking at that schema, and you don't need help from support to do those changes, I'm not going to stop you. Is there a way to make changes to users, roles, tools, filters, views, pages, navigation, theme, widgets, and maps that will propagate across the cluster? Yeah, this I think was very similar to like the first question. Yes, that is what a cluster does, does all that. Can we apply six packs without disjoin and install apply join? Uh, no, uh, you, you can't do that. Uh, if you try it, it should stop you in this version. There should definitely be some logic there. Um, I have an airbag in my car that's supposed to save my life if I get like into a head-end crash, you know, at like 40 or 50 miles an hour. Every time I jump in my car, I don't try to do that to see if it works, though. So don't do that. Is it possible to make mass changes without using the GUI? We have a lot of filters and want to create maps using groups of them. It is painfully slow via the map builder. The same holds true for creating a lot of filters. Yes, there's a, there's a great way to do that. Um, and this isn't cluster specific. This is just general web GUI. Um, there's a tool called WAPI, W-A-A-P-I, which exposes a, like, essentially, like what it's saying, a, a web top API, WAPI. Um, which would allow you to do a lot of that stuff where you can create maps and views and uh, filters and groups of filters, etc. Okay, 
great. We are intermittently noticing duplications of pages, page listings in the default folder. How can we prevent that? Uh, this could be something that is, I mean, it, it's definitely a misconfiguration. I, for that type of a problem, I'd open a PMR to investigate it. Um, it could be a lot of things from some sort of directory permission issue to uh, the server times not being in sync, especially if it's like intermittent, it could be you know, a combination of these things. Okay. It seems clustering nodes for the web GUI will result in a lot of downtime if changes need to be made due to the requirement to disjoin, destroy the cluster, to recreate it so the cluster database is updated. If changes are made on a particular node in the configuration files, a lot of manual effort is required re replicating the changes on each node. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that one, I think, is uh, mainly like some confusion from uh, the Knowledge Center, where they're talking about pulling out configurations and exporting them and then importing them into the other nodes, uh, which is kind of like a good idea if you are uh, just one of very concerned about your configuration because you have so many different changes and you want to take a backup. I would do it just mainly as a backup. I wouldn't do that necessarily as the disjoin join. But you have to remember the whole point of that cluster, right, is not only to uh, share your session in between the application servers, but to store your configuration in, in the database. Okay? So if you're disjoining them from the cluster, quote unquote, essentially what the only step that you've done, if you just do that disjoin, and the, the remove node is taking the configurations out of GD2 and, and set them to point locally. Okay, so at that point, your cluster is still functional, right? Like you can still get to the, each node when they're running. So if you take them all out and you have two nodes running and one's installing a fix pack and you don't direct any traffic towards the one that's getting the install done, uh, there's not really downtime there. Was that all for the questions? Was that all for the questions? That was all of the questions we had through email, and then you have some uh, URLs listed. Ah, yes. Oh, so, yes. so let me show that. So. This is the first URL that I've got listed here. I think uh, a lot of people aren't aware of this, that really it's just a, a wonderful website. Uh, I'll get different PMRs from time to time, and you know, I think there's like an impression that sometimes like when you're working in IBM, like you've got some big secret knowledge base with all the answers or anything like that. But I can tell you right now that nine times out of 10, whatever answers I'm giving people, are going to be gotten from one of these URLs. Uh, the first one is the compatibility reports. Um, for the products and the knowledge and the uh, knowledge center, it used to be called information center. Okay, when you're installing different things, it'll often give you, uh, you know, versions of Java or browsers that are, that are you know supposed to be supported. Or like in this example. The DB2 database version. Um, sometimes this information is just kind of like a guideline, and it will get updated or changed. Or sometimes there's something incorrect. The compatibility reports, that first link, is key. If you don't have that in your favorites, put it in your favorites today, because it'll tell you basically anything that you want to know when you're trying to plan for an install. Uh, you can get your operating system for uh, you know something you're installing related software. So <clears throat> if you check like the related software, you're going to get 
oh, I'm installing WebGUI 8.1, what kind of browser can I use? What kind of Java client can I use, et cetera? So um, these reports are really just awesome, and they're very up-to-date and accurate. Uh, the other two are like kind of specific to this topic. Um, one is going to be the Knowledge Center. Um, I think they've been putting in this location for each version for a while now. But under configuring with GUI, productive usage, you'll find a section for load balancing. And that's where most of this information comes from. Um, I did notice last night when I was getting ready for this that they're pointing to a bad version of DB2. Um, it's actually 10 that's needed. I, I can tell you this. I put in this comment last night and got almost an immediate response. So they're working on fixing that document right now. Um, and for all of you, those comments at the bottom of the page actually go somewhere. So if you see something that looks not right, go ahead and put a comment in there and tell them what's not right. Um, the other one has to do with uh, cluster administration, which uh, uh, is going to mention like the, the HA tool. Okay, so uh, I think somebody was saying that they couldn't find it. I think possibly that this, I'd have to double check it. I think maybe either this is the correct path or it's supposed to be a dash home. Um, or Jazz Home UI, but I think I think it's this might be correct. I have to double check that one. All right. Were there uh, any other questions or? There aren't any other questions at this time. If anyone has any questions, please post them in the chat. All right. Um, well, I guess uh, everyone gets uh, 15 minutes back from me if there's if there's nothing else. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Philip, and thank you, Christina. Thank you, Christina. I, I did have one more update from uh, Stanford for a previous question. Let me give him the microphone quick. Stanford, you should be able to speak now. You had an update to the previous question on where the HA tool.sh is located in Jazz SM112. Yeah, like it, Phil was right. Uh, the uh, the path in the uh, doc is wrong. It should be Jazz SM UI bin, and then there should be a HA directory there, and you can find the HA tool. Thanks, Sam. I have a few more questions. Is it possible to change the weight of the cluster members, like give more priority to more cluster members over others? Yes, there's a configuration to do that. Um, I don't know. You'd have to have a compelling reason why to do something like that. I, I really wouldn't play with that. I would just keep them all equally weighted. Uh, if there's some sort of a, the only reason I could think of you want to to weight things like that is um, 
possibly you have like uh, cluster members that are you know like one on the east coast and one on the west coast and you're trying to direct people from one side to the other but even then the weighting wouldn't really do it um, I, I in that case I would have an IHS server on either side you know it should be uh, pointing to the things that that's fast and that work well Oh, uh, you know, and actually, now that I'm thinking of it, there, there's one other thing that you should know when you're using the IHS that I didn't mention previously. Um, when you have Dash and you've got WAS there, you've got WAS to fix packs on there, if you run the version info, you'll see what version of, you know, like a update version that you've got there. Um, you want to make sure at all times that your IHS server, you know, uh, versions for your your IHS server and the WAS plugin that's in the, the IHS server are in sync with the, your application backend. So if you've got, you know, a update, uh, you know, 35 on the app, make sure your IHS is at the same version. One more question. Could it be possible to know in the future if we'll be offering some demo labs so we can attend? Um, are you looking for a demo lab specifically on the, the web GUI load balancing? Okay, so okay. I'm, I'm, what, I'm not sure what a demo lab is, Christina. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure what they're asking for. Um, we do have, we are planning additional webcasts for next month. If you're part of the Tivoli user group community, you should receive an email about them. And I also send a notification to the NetCol user group community. Um, next month we're planning a topic for impact single sign-on and another topic for web GUI user and group synchronization. I'll let you know if I answer your question. The user and group synchronization sounds like a nice topic. Yes, we get a lot of questions on that. Okay, that answered his question. That's all the questions that I have. All right. Um, I don't know, uh, Stan or, or Tom. If you have any thoughts that you want to add or feel like I missed something, uh, go ahead and chime in. Uh, Stan and Tom, did you have anything to add? Yeah, I think Phil pretty much covered everything. If you have any questions, just um, I guess just raise the PMR and we'll help you out. Okay, well then I'll turn it back over to Sam. All right, thank you, Christina. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for attending. And uh, thank you, Philip, for offering your time and sharing your knowledge with us. Um, so please do take a few moments to fill out your post-event survey. Your input is very important to us, and we use it to uh, apply to future events. But this does conclude today's conference, and you may now disconnect. Have a wonderful day.